rhino day, and as the sun rises on the garage, I was already gone and on the way to the tuners. Were the comments right? Would the spaghetti rods end the day on the moon? Should I have just started with a factory turbo car? Or have I made some as yet undiscovered mistake to go along with the already discovered ones? Because I have no idea what I'm doing. Hey. I had well over 100 kilometers, including some painful traffic to navigate before it would be in a professional's hands. We're about to find out if a complete hack can or should turbo an unopened NA Barra in his home garage, and if so, what power can we make? Before today's video starts, I'm now aiming to have this car back at Heathcote Park Raceway on the 3rd of July to see what we can run. I may be a little flat out filming at times, but if anyone wants to come and say g'day in between, please do. Just know that both me and the car are a lot uglier in person. To make up for that though, I will have a limited number of free stickers for those that want a little something for the toolbox. For now, I won't be doing any more of these once they're gone, but if there's enough interest, then we may start listing something like that on the store one day. And while I'm in a giving mood, which is rare for someone as tight as me, I've also decided we will do one last giveaway competition on the results of the quarter mile times. Just a bit of fun and to let everyone have a chance at some goodies, even if you can't be there at the track on the day. Entry will be the same as last time. Just subscribe and like this video. Then one guess each in the comments. But this time obviously for quarter mile times and two free decimal places I think we'll do to try and make sure we don't have a heap of the same guesses. Winner gets their choice of a hoodie or shirt from the store. Stick around for the dino results to help those guesses. Good luck to everyone and hope you enjoy this video. It's a few nights before I date with the tuners and already I think I'm going to be losing some sleep. Part nerves and part kid before Christmas. So. I've just come out here to have a final look over, but I think all the normal pre-dyno items have been ticked off already. While converting the car, it's got new oil and spark plugs with smaller gaps, so that's all fairly new still. The fuel filter isn't very old. The air filter is clean. Nothing seems to be leaking, and I have checked over that about a million times now. So some fresh fuel on the way there, and we should be pretty well set. Don't know why I'm nervous then. What could go wrong? Well, even professionals make mistakes, so I sure as hell could have. It's true that the rods in these engines aren't very thick, so it doesn't buy us a great deal of room for error. And we could just straight up miss the power number goal we set for this series at 220 rear wheel kilowatts, but that's not such a big deal, unless you've announced your goals to an audience. It's certainly doable on an NA engine and more while being pretty safe. The Max Performance website does list a guide power figure for their stage one package for factory turbo cars as being between 220 and 240 rear wheel kilowatts with no real mods, only a tune. Just not sure what boost that is at though. And with our current setup, that's what we don't have control over. We're running a seven PSI spring in an upgraded Turbo Smart wastegate actuator as my only form of boost control, as we still have the NA ECU, not the turbo one, and we don't have any other boost controller. I have seen nine PSI with that as mentioned in the last video though, and these are prone to boost creep. So if you made a power guess based on nine PSI and it doesn't hold, sorry. But to be fair, I wasn't clear because it's not 100% clear to me just yet either. I'm learning as I go, and I can't just endlessly beat on this without the final tune. We do have the advantage over a turbo car though, with extra compression being a NA engine still, with 9.7 to one, where the same era turbo engine had 8.7 to one. Good for free power and bringing boost in quicker, but bad for those small rods and smaller margin for error on just about everything. It did make 172 rear wheel kilowatts NA though, so we know it is relatively healthy at least. And 
that's going to be the case for a lot of this setup. Many of the pro points are also cons. The turbo we have is Peter, the slightly smaller but genuine Garrett 3576 from an FG. Good for quick spool, but not for all out power and faster spool will again be harder on those rods. It does still have the 20% underdrive pulley kit we did in the NA series. Not good for huge power, but a little and gives better response. Again, a slight con as it will rev out a little quicker. I did install a slightly bigger and shiny intercooler to keep intake temps down, which is a big factor in turbos making power, but it is an eBay intercooler and still questionable whether it is actually an upgrade. The other power mod is the airbox and pod filter, but not worth a heap of power anyway. It's more there for the sweet intake noise. There's also some straight cons like the early BA, I believe doesn't have full cam control as later cars did. It is a four speed auto, which with the upgraded trance cooler and shift kit it already has, or some shift tuning in your tune, I'm fairly sure it will hold just fine for now, but they do suck up a lot of power before it gets to the wheels. And we still have the stock NA intake manifold with the runner switching disabled, but this should be close enough to a factory turbo unit with this and not make a big difference. The engine is completely unopened and even the valve springs haven't been changed. Engine wise, I'm fairly confident we'll be just fine, but those springs seem to be a complete roll of the dice as to how long they'll hold on for. And without boost control, the stock injectors, turbo fuel reg, and slightly upgraded fuel pump should be more than enough fuel. Otherwise, it's all factory turbo parts. Cooler piping, crossover, dump pipe, cat, exhaust, all stock turbo gear. Making this a pretty base or bare bones conversion on a budget that can be done at home and that someone could build further off once they wanted to. Really, as long as it stays together though, the peak power isn't super important to me. I'm loving the new turbo noises and it should still be plenty of fun on the street. Huh, I feel a little better now that I've talked about it, but we do need to know that number. So let's skip the many more ramblings, the little sleep, and no doubt the many nervous wheeze ahead for me to the car strapped down on the dyno. The camera has been left with the guys at Max Performance, so some odd guy isn't lurking in their workshop. Max has a new all-wheel drive roller dyno to replace the one we used last time, but it has been a bit of a heartbreaker recently, reading a bit lower. It is just a tuning tool and all dynos can vary anyway, but this is the internet where that number is important. So, it was suggested that the hub dyno they now have will actually give a much fairer comparison figure to the old dyno, and I happily took the offer. Thankfully, there were no issues yet from my work, so Zane could work through the tune on PCM Tech and do what he could to get us some power, which was a little limited without that boost control. While it is coming in strong to 9 or 10 PSI, the actual boost we were seeing was down to somewhere around 6 or even 5-ish pound high in the rev range. Our wastegate actuator has its boost reference off the turbo housing, so it's probably still 7 PSI there. But then once the intercooler restricts the airflow a little and cools the air, there's actually less pressure getting into the engine. A bit more tweaking and it was time for our last power run. I'll take you along for a few short runs and driving impressions in a minute, along with showing what looks to be one final issue we'll have to address in the future. Bloody cars. But what was the figure? For now, we've ended up with 213 rear wheel kilowatts due to the lower boost up top, but with a heap of mid-range torque and a peak of 552 Newton meters at around just 2200 RPM. So. From our last NA figure of 172 kilowatts, we've gained 40 kilowatts over our basic NA mods from a full turbo setup that I'm hoping has come in around $3,000. We'll cover all our costs in an upcoming video, but because we've already tuned that ECU at max before, our retune on the day was only $550. At that power level, it should be happy all day long, and we'll be taking that as is for now to have a crack at dropping a second or two off our quarter mile time from last time. But if this power figure isn't enough for you and you want to see it cranked up more, 
go ahead and comment, like, share, do all those things that make a video do well, and we just may head back for more. I'm thinking that may happen. For those that do want more Perla, you could literally get there with a $150 electronic boost controller like the HDI one or similar. Not ideal for control, for a little more you could get a eBoost 2 or even look at going the stock turbo computer as I'd prefer to do. But universal controllers should be fine to get us up to steady 7 PSI or higher up to maxing, uh, excuse me, maxing those stock injectors at 10 PSI and potentially another 20 plus kilowatts or more. The next small step up would be injectors and even more boost. If you had those injectors, you could even skip the boost controller and have just done a 12 PSI wastegate spring. There's all sorts of different possible combos for this. Think you'd then be creeping up towards the limits of any one of the valve springs, the intercooler, the auto hating life, or even that small FG turbo. Oh, and as we've mentioned, those skinny little rods. Not 100% on that, but Zane did mention 260 kilowatts-ish as doable for this car with just boost control and injectors now, which sure is tempting. Now the number's out. Congrats to our last giveaway winner, Glenn, who nailed that power figure in the last video and has been sent out a hoodie and shirt. Hope you enjoy those, mate. Let's finally go for a victory drive to see what this turbo setup feels and sounds like, even if we did fall a little short of our completely made up goal. And while we do, start getting those guesses in for the quarter mile time and our next giveaway. We'll try build boots and get a harder launch in a sec, but for now, let's try a little zero to 100 with a soft launch. So yeah, we've definitely stepped up from the old NA setup. Which may seem obvious based on that peak power difference of 40 kilowatts or so, but that peak isn't even the best part. It's definitely quicker all round, but it does noticeably feel like it's falling off up high a little bit. So you can look at that two ways. We don't have enough top end, or that the mid range is pretty strong for what it is anyway, and it does give you a pretty good push back into your seat. That's where most of the street driving is done anyway, especially with the long gearing in this BTR Auto still. But it means you can leave it in gear cruising and still give it a little to pick up speed without dropping back a gear if you want. More fun if you do though. Well, that's gonna make overtaking a lot safer. <laughs> At least as long as it's dry, I guess. Which I haven't mentioned actually. Please get some decent tyres if you're doing this. It is a decent jump in torque for even our basic setup, and I could see it being an issue if you're used to going flat out everywhere with your NA setup. And while I'm on a more serious note, I'm sure some of you will be asking about fuel economy. I'm lucky and this is just a toy for me, so I often don't pay attention to that, but I know some of you will daily something like this. I can say that driving to the tuners and back, where I took it pretty easy, it was the same if not better than it was before. Um, I saw on the trip computer, which isn't entirely accurate, yada yada yada, it was doing between eight and a half and nine liters per 100 Ks on the way there and back as a turbo, whereas it would have been doing somewhere in the high range of that with the NA setup. So I'll call it same, same, I'd say. That is until you open it up, of course. And as mentioned earlier, I have now driven this in a load of traffic and up to open roads with no overheating or drivability dramas. Mind you, the weather has been a bit cooler too. So if all is good then, Where's the other issue I mentioned? I'll throw a clip in here, but you may have already noticed it. I have driven around it a little on those pulls. It looks like that turbo is just dying to make more power and boost creeping, but 
only in very specific condition. These are notorious for not controlling boost anytime you upgrade the exhaust, cat, or dump pipe, which I haven't done though, so I thought I'd be fine. Maybe it's the actuator or the extra compression or something else entirely. The problem isn't generally there on single gear pulls that I've seen, but after shifting when you're still wide open. It's normal for boost to spike quickly on auto shifts, but once it does, I've seen the wastegate not able to get it back down or to control it, and I've even seen it keep climbing unless I let off a little. Looks to really be an issue when manually shifting it a little early or really loading it up with fogging it down a bit or on a hill. And for now, I'll just monitor it and drive it around, but I will sort it out. Seems we'll be playing with wastegate porting or another solution really soon, unfortunately. I'll keep you all updated on that. So we may have missed one made up goal on that power figure, but I don't really care. For the extra power we did get, I still feel like it's been really worthwhile. And I can cruise it to get a kebab just the same as before, only with sweet turbo intake and blow off noises, which is perhaps a more important goal I should have set, to be honest. We have one last made up goal, heading back to the track to see if we can cut a few seconds off and try for a 13 second pass. Not sure if we'll get that or not, I really should have researched it more, but if we have any chance of doing that, we need to bring our 60 foot way down by building some boost on the launch. Let's see how that goes. definitely building some boost and the track will be much better for traction than out here obviously. I think that's going to make things nice and interesting for our next track day. Get your quarter mile time guesses in and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one or I might even see you out at the track. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video around with a mate or two that needs a turbo in their life. Cheers.